Hi family, how are we doing this evening? So, let me tell you what I'm doing and what I really want you to check out as you see in the title, right? So, you know, a few days ago, I was passing by the bookshelf and I saw the title of a book that I had intended to read from last year, but just did not get the chance to read it, to be honest. I felt like I wanted to read this book. In fact, it's part of the reason why I bought it. I actually went to a book fair at some point last year. I don't remember if it was last year summer. And um, this was among a plethora of books I was able to grab for how much? Like 20 bucks. So I think I got like 15 books for the amount because they were having this sale so at the book fair we got the chance to just choose books from whatever genre and if we took a certain number then we would have gotten a discounted price which I did and so among the books that I took is a particular one that I said just a few days ago I felt like I wanted to pick it out and start reading now of course I am blown and I remember now why I took the book. So I get is who this a text text me. Hold on. Let me check out these messages. Oh, okay. Blessings to you also. Okay. So but I have to turn off this phone because if it's going to keep doing this, it's going to distract me. So I don't either have to turn it down or turn it off. Anyway, so I started reading this book. And in this book, there's a compilation of testimonies from key eyewitnesses of people who have had NDEs, near-death experiences. So, you know... Part of the reason the author of the book has put together all of these testimonies is because he has seen a lot of consistency and similarities. And this is someone who was a skeptic at one point before he became a convert and not just a convert, but is now a pastor. And by the way, he has experience in the medical field. In fact, it's safe to say that he is or was a medical doctor, trained doctor. So, I get to this part where it talks about a girl whose name was Vicky. And it says here that Vicky is someone who is visually impaired. So, in reality, she cannot see. So, in Vicky's testimony, the doctor, of course, part of the reason why they have been able to write these true Accounts of things that people saw and experienced in the other realm is because they have all these different proofs, including medical histories of individuals who say they have experienced things to prove, you know, or justify what they say. So, for instance, if this person says she's, you know, visually impaired, they'd have all the proofs they need in order to, you know, make a solid statement that whatever is said is true. So this person whose name is Vicky, she met in an accident um, after leaving a place where, you know, she used to go to in order to sing. And I guess she would make money there. But as a visually impaired person, she had to rely on people to get her home as usual. But on one particular night, the persons who took her home were people who were highly intoxicated and they met in an accident. So Vicky, having met in the accident, um, she said that she just knows that at one point she just saw herself like in the ceiling. And she was looking down on what appeared to be a body. And she saw doctors surrounding the body and were trying to resuscitate this body. And she also noted that the doctors were even talking. And some of the expressions she heard were like, 
we can't bring her back you know she's gone stuff like that so she said she kept on saying to them i'm right here i'm fine but clearly they could not hear her anyhow she said she got to a point where she was like you know what these people are not listening to me it makes no sense i even bother to remain in this room so i'm leaving so she said she left and she went upwards so she went through the ceiling in this new body of hers in fact she said at first it was a little bit unusual and difficult for her to identify for the first time with her eyes some of the things she had only experienced via touch and also hearing so she was just getting accustomed to what it means to see things and to make sense of pictures and colors and so so on so anyhow she said she went straight through the roof of the hospital and um i want to point out this part that has stood out for me okay so by the way i'm always fascinated by heavenly things i'm one of those persons i love anything that is glorious anything that has to do with jesus anything that has to do with the other realm like the supernatural the spiritual realm anything that has to do with encounters or experiences that involve jesus i want to hear it i'll sit down and i'll listen to you i'll read it if it's plausible or if it's something that is true or valid don't come to me with no foolishness or don't make up any stories just to get my attention don't do it i don't like that don't do it okay so i get to this point where she says here let me read in quote as these revelations are unfolding vicky notices that now next to her is a figure whose radiance is far greater than the illumination of any of the persons she has so far encountered. Immediately, she recognizes this being to be Jesus. So she had talked about how, having gone through the roof of the hospital, that she was taken up even further into what appeared to be like a tube at one point, which started out dark, she said. But then the higher she went, she said, was the brighter a light became. And once she got to the end of the light, she noticed that there were people who were made of light or they had light around them and she said she noticed that she too had light around her so she was in this space that basically looked like a beautiful garden and while she was there observing all the things that the people there were doing she noticed that there was this bigger light that was there and she said it wasn't long before she got the revelation that this was actually jesus so um you know she continued to talk about how he communicated with her not through speech like he literally did not open his mouth yet he was speaking to her and she was talking back does that sound familiar so let me just jump to this paragraph and then I'll read what I wrote in my book, I've Seen Jesus, so you can see the correlation or the consistency. So she writes here, this, this is the profoundest thing she has said in her testimony, right? She says, the writer puts it this way. The writer says, Vicky described a bearded man with shoulder length hair and piercing eyes wearing a robe with a sash but barefooted and she said brilliant light came out of him ah! so i want you to make a note of these things so bearded man put this in the comments bearded man so he had beard shoulder length hair make a note of that as well piercing eyes 
wearing a robe, type that too, wearing a robe. And you got to type this too, wearing a sash. And also you got to write brilliant light came out of him. This is what this person who I don't know has written in her description of Jesus. Now let me come to my book. I've seen Jesus in chapter one that's entitled The First Appearance. I have here on page 16, starting with the second paragraph, it says, a massive bright light suddenly appeared in the sky before me. Its dramatic appearance was so abrupt and awe-inspiring that I immediately started to tremble. This light was clearly different from that of the sun and was so unusually bright that it changed what was supposed to be dusk to noonday. When I gazed at it, I noticed that it was somewhat oval-shaped. It was surrounded by a burst of glorious, shiny, colorful rays, which interestingly seemed to have a life of its own. I mean, these rays were literally dancing. Who knows? They might have been worshipping. Whatever they were doing, I had never seen anything like it. I'm going to skip to page 17 of my book. I have here in the subheading, what Jesus really looks like. Listen to this. Above his head was a glowing ring that sparkled with different colors. It too appeared to have been dancing, even as the rays of light that protruded from his body were dancing. The Apostle John certainly knew what he was talking about when he said, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. I mean, everything about Jesus was alive. Everything. Of course, seeing as I was only eight years of age at the time, it took me a few more years to understand that this ring that I saw is called a halo. And that this is the reason Hollywood often portrays him with one. What can I say? The halo is real. Continuing with the description. The Lord Jesus hair. Listen to this. The Lord Jesus hair was perfectly parted in two. It was wavy and long and was touching either side of his shoulders. That's Shadeen's account. This woman, who I do not know, says he was a bearded man with shoulder length hair. I don't know who this is. I'm just reading a book. So do you see already? It's the same person. So let me continue with what I have in my book. With my innocent mind, I was surprised that he had eyes <laughs> like you and I do. I was. He had ears, a nose, lips, and eyebrows. And to my surprise, look at the Holy Spirit allowing me to write this. And to my surprise, he even had a mustache. Here's what the other person says in this book. The person says he was a bearded man. When Shadeen tells you that the Lord Jesus had a mustache, she's telling you the truth. This person said he had beard. However she wants to put it, I call it mustache. She says beard. Same thing. He's so handsome. And he has, he has it. He has, um, I, I guess, Everything about him is just so perfect. I would say he has the most perfect, if there's such a thing, mustache there is. Like for me, I was really surprised that God actually has features that human beings have. But I guess, you know, 
looking back and reflecting on what I saw and really dissecting these things through the power of the Holy Spirit and through knowledge and wisdom that he gives to me, I now understand why the Bible says that he created us in his own image according to his likeness. The idea of you having two eyes came from God. You having a nose is not a coincidence. Men having mustache is not a coincidence. God created man according to his image and likeness. Okay? It's God's idea. I could say so much more, but let me read. It says here, truly, oh wait, I'm skipping. His visage was something to admire, truly. In all my life, I had never seen any person as beautiful as he. In fact, I soon wondered if the people in the district were seeing him as well. God knows it would have made me feel so much better to know I wasn't the only person consumed by this great light. I was too young to understand that I was caught up in a vision. So let me read back what this person's testimony says. It says here, Vicky described a bearded man with shoulder length hair and piercing eyes, wearing a rope, piercing eyes. Wait, what about my description about his eyes? Oh, here it is. Let me read. Let me continue reading. I'm sorry. Let me continue. <laughs> it says here, I'm still on page 18 of my book. It says, I must admit that even now, as I share my experience with you, my eyes are filled with tears. I was crying while I was writing this book. Just so you know, there were there were many instances while writing when I was literally just shedding tears, just shedding tears as I was writing. Maybe it's because I can actually feel the presence of the Lord all over my room as he brings it all back to memory. So this book, I've seen Jesus was written in the very presence of the Lord, okay? This book will always be a very special book to me. It's my first book, but for more than one reason, it will always be hatched somewhere very special in my heart. The way it was written, how the Lord would visit me as I write, which is why I'm not surprised when people say, oh, I was reading your book and I felt the presence of the Lord. You will. You will. Because the writings here are from the Holy Spirit himself. He just used my fingers, but they're actually his words, not mine. So I have here, by the way, did I mention to you that Jesus' eyes were bluish? greenish and that everything about him was glowing oh yes i mean everything <laughs> are you hearing me so this person describes his eyes as piercing wearing a robe with a sash but barefooted let me see if i get to that part in my book hold on um Mm. Okay, let me just continue reading. So, in fact, there were moments while I was standing before him when I felt as though I was staring at a picture frame. Perhaps that was because his eyes were fixed on me the whole time. Now, I remember specifically that it was while processing these random thoughts of whether or not I was staring at a frame that the thing I least expected happened. He began to smile at me. At the time, I didn't realize he was able to read my mind. Of course, it took me years to understand that in addition to that, he was the one who caused the clouds to take on the various forms. I could only see down to his chest. He was wearing a robe. See the robe come here now. I could only see down to his chest. He was wearing a robe and had what seemed like a sash over his shoulder. No way. 
I can be very dramatic at times. Please pardon me. This person says he was wearing a robe with a sash. And when he appeared to me, he was wearing a robe with a sash. And I always describe it like talking about him. Um, he's allowing me to see him all over again. Okay. He had that sash. Let me tell you, this robe looked like a thick robe. The, the only thing you need to know about this robe is don't ask me what color it was. Everything of him and on him was made of glory slash light. So there was no color. I can't tell you, oh, the robe was burgundy. The robe was red. Everything was just light. But you could, you could actually differentiate the different parts of him. Okay. So I can recall that as he was there, as I was looking at him, okay, he had on the sash. And let me tell you, to his, okay, let me put myself in his position. Holy Spirit, please remind me. I want to believe, I always talk about it, but I guess now it's not coming back, but Based on my memory, the sash was draped from my right, but his left. Like it, it had a little draping here. I wish I could. Let me, let me see if I could do this. If I can do this. Hold on. I thought I had a sheet. Okay, I have a pillowcase. So. So right here, where the sash would begin, okay, it looked draped-ish, but it's a part of his outfit. So at the shoulder here, if you're a dressmaker, you know what it's like when something looks draped. So it has what looks like a bundle, something like this. So it was like this, and it goes across him. Not the thin um, sash that you see the Miss Worlds wear. His sash was it looked thick it looked almost like a drape so to speak but it just looked royal okay um and he had on what looked like a robe so he allowed me to see from here right down to like all of his torso i could see so i mean reading this person's description it just i'm like lord you're just so wonderful you're just you. Whenever you appear to people, you appear the same way. He has one feature. Unless he wants to hide himself. Like maybe if he comes into your dream, he probably would take on the appearance of someone else. But when he appears, he appears as this one person. If someone says that they see Jesus, listen, their description has got to line up because he's one person. Do you hear me? Now, the black community wants to have their own description and perception of Jesus because for some reason it will make their flesh feel better. So the black community right now as we speak continues to argue and to convince themselves and want to convince others that Jesus has nappy hair, kinky hair. He does not. I am a black person telling you that he does not have nappy hair. It is what it is. So people can always come up with their stories and their lies to make themselves feel good. But he just looks how he looks and it cannot change. We cannot draw a person with kinky nappy hair and say this is our Jesus and put on all these shades of color, dark chalk call no he looks how he looks you can't change it do you hear me let's get out of our flesh god does not deal with this race issue like we do in flesh he made everybody do you hear me the lord jesus is perfect in everything everything about him is just so perfect I was there looking and I, because I was, he allowed me to get all these details of how he looks. 
I wanted to know exactly what color his iris was, his pupil was, sorry. So he allowed me to look, and I know what I saw at first. At first, I saw blue. So I made a note, he has blue eyes, because I am I knew I was going to talk about this as a child. And once I got that conclusion that, okay, his eyes are blue, he allowed me to see green. He did that. So my conclusion is his eyes are bluish, greenish. And if he wants them to appear as fire, I guess he can. Because when Ezekiel saw him, I believe Ezekiel saw fire in his eyes. Uh, when John, the revelator, saw him, he too saw fire. But when I saw him, he allowed me to see the greenish, bluish colors. So I can't tell you his eyes are blue because I also saw green. So the best way to describe his eyes is that he has bluish greenish eyes it is what it is i love to talk about jesus ask me why he showed me him i don't know i didn't ask him to show me him i did not in fact when he appeared i was afraid i was afraid i was afraid i'm not going to lie I was very much afraid. Let me tell you something. And he's so wise. Like he knows everything. When he appeared. You see. I told you in this very said book. Right. I've seen Jesus. I told you about the second time. When he came to visit. You know what he did the second time. If you read my book. You would see. So let me go over what happened the second time. So first of all, I like to talk about these things. I really hope you don't get bored because it's the story of my life. I love to talk about Jesus. Are you willing to hear? Do you want to listen? Do you care to hear? Okay. So let me tell you what happened. When he came the second time, this would have been shortly after I got baptized and converted. I did tell you in my book, I've seen Jesus that in the year 2015 right it's like throughout the whole year i kept having these flashbacks of the appearance out of nowhere so in 2015 i was 20 something i think i might have been like mm, 23 24 there about okay young adult i was not interested in anything that had to do with christianity or anything that had to do with jesus i knew somewhere in the back of my mind in a very special and secretive place that I had seen him many years ago. So as I've expressed in my book, there's one thing nobody could tell me, and it was that Jesus was not real. As much as I was not always in the church and was doing my own thing and was coming under such heavy influence from the scientific world, because when you become a science student, someone who studies biology, chemistry, and then especially when you start to do physics, which I loved so much. And I had a physics teacher, God bless his soul. I really hope he has been changed. If you're watching me, sir, I respect you so much. I don't mean it in a bad way. I'm just saying that I really hope that you've given your heart to Jesus. Okay. My physics teacher was a Rasta. Okay. Rasta man. And sir, I want you to know that you have influenced me in some ways that I had to rid myself of and I had to relearn some things because while under your teaching, I remember you told us that we could create our own clouds. You told us that if we want, we can create our own rainbow. You told us that we could create all these things and my stupid self believed you for a while. And so when I had my encounter with Jesus, I had to unlearn these things. I'm just telling you the truth, sir. I love you so much. I loved classes so much. I just want you to know I respect you so much. Right? So I was, for, for many years of my life, I had nothing to do with this whole church thing, Christianity thing. So in 2015, when I started to have these flashbacks, I just, I just knew that there was, I could not explain it at the time, but I knew a turning was happening. I had gotten to a turning point in my life. It was happening slowly, but surely. 
right? So the conversion happened, I told you, on um, a New Year's Eve night, okay? You call that crossover night. Now, four months down the line, I found myself, I told you all of this that I'm saying is right here in the book. I've seen Jesus. That's why you need to grab your copy. It's on Amazon. I will put the links in the comments, whether you live in Canada, the UK or the US, you just need to hit that link, click it, and it will take you straight to my book. You need to have your paperback copy so that you can highlight whatever you want to highlight. Okay. It's not a fictional book. It's a nonfiction. It's someone's real life story, real experiences, real testimony. Okay. Good. Wait, I, I want to take a sip, a sip of water. That is okay. Let me calm down. I'm getting too excited. <laughs> I'm getting way too excited. Hold on. We need some juice. Let me take out uh, some juice here. And then come back and sit on. Oh. Oh, watch the water behind me. Do you know the water? They're right here in the chair <laughs> behind me. Sorry, I may never see it. <laughs> Until we get up. Instead, we go for juice. Hold on. I like these, so let me get some. So, hold on there, family. Give me one second. By the way, fam. Okay, Islaine, thank you. Yes, I too am excited to talk about Jesus. By the way, you're welcome to share. While I refresh myself, you can just hit that share button so that someone can benefit from the conversation. Why don't you do that? And once you've shared, just type shared in the comments. I think what I'm about to share will help someone. I feel like most times, if not all the time when I talk, um, someone is inspired somehow. Yeah. Yeah. You might not be the one, but there are other people who benefit. So let's not keep this to ourselves. Sister Stacy, hi. Mm. Sister Stacy. <laughs> I've never seen you live, Sister Stacy. It's so good to see you. Someone please type in the comments. It's good to have you here, Sister Stacy. Make her feel welcome. She's so special to me and the team. Girl, that woman can pray. She is so anointed. Like when we're dealing with certain things, when the enemy comes up like a flood, we know who to call. Trust me. Yeah. When we come together, a trouble for the enemy. So please make Sister Stacy feel good. Say hi, Sister Stacy. Say hello, Sister Stacy, in the comments. Makes you feel good. She deserves it. Samuel is just getting the chance to watch me live. He's from Namibia. It's great to have you, Samuel. Yes, Islaine, that's it. Yes, thank you for making Sister Stacy feel good. Good. Thank you, Sister Lashani and Sister Marcia and Kareen. I appreciate you helping to make her feel warm and welcome. So, in April, I told you about, you know, the encounter that I had with the two angels first, right? And I told you that I went on a season of fasting. So, watch this. Exactly. So, my supernatural experiences... In this new phase of my life, being a new convert then, began on the seventh day of my fast. Exactly seven days. Listen to me carefully, okay? Because the angel visited me the Monday, the Easter Monday. This experience I'm about to tell you about, which is in the book, happened the Sunday. So how many days is that? Now, seven days. 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Seven days. Seven days. Someone type seven days. Okay? Now, this fast was not a joke fast. I can safely say to you that from very early in my walk, God had given me the discipline to conduct myself in a certain, excuse me, manner when it comes on to spiritual affairs or godly affairs. So, I was very much into this fast. Okay, in my book, I gave you a rundown of what a typical day was like in my life during that season. So on day seven, no, I just know that I went to church. And um, when I was there at church, you know, church was amazing as usual. And this was in Jamaica, in Kingston. I returned home. And this is what I know. This is the part that I remember best. I just know that not long after I got home, okay? I lived in a one bedroom at the time, by the way. And I will say to you that, listen, if that house in which I used to live goes up for sale, right? And I can't afford to buy it. I will buy that house just so that I can access that room or just so I could just not have anybody whatsoever live in that room right now as I speak somebody live in there but if it was up to me and if it was my house if I was not renting but was living there as a homeowner then of course was not possible nobody could have lived in that room ever again it's just to me, too sacred. Anyway, I deviated, but let me get back on track. So I went home. Oh, I now remember why I mentioned that it was a one bedroom because I didn't have a living room to go into. There was no chair to sit in, no settee, nothing. If I was sitting, I was sitting on my bed. There was not even a chair in the room. I could not even afford that. So I got home. I slouched on the bed. I think I took, I had taken off my clothes, my Sunday clothes, but I just know that once I walked through that door, I just felt heavy sleep, deep sleep fall upon me. Hold on. How can I, um, oh, is there a way to, to share this link? How do you? Okay, give me one second, family. I'm just trying to help someone. I'm seeing the messages come in, and I'm just wanting to help someone here. Hear this. Okay, hold on. Okay. Let me try again. Okay, anyway. So, as I was saying, I wanted to sleep so badly, so badly. I couldn't help myself before I knew it. I was in deep sleep okay it was not usual for me to fall asleep that easily but looking back I realized that it was all supernatural what was happening to me once I stepped through the door so I started to sleep and the next thing I knew is I was in the spirit and I was walking and the Lord Jesus was next to me. So here's the thing. When he had visited in 
um sister sister stephanie could you share the link for me the this facebook link could you share it to the broadcasts for me thank you so much sis and also if you could send it to my whatsapp the 876-319 number sister stephanie then i'll share it on my end thank you so much sister steph it's good to see you if you could share it to me now that would be great so where was i yeah so remember when i was younger right when he first appeared i saw him he allowed me to see everything clear as day right but this time when he visited he did not allow me to see his face nor his body i just didn't see him but he was right next to me and the both of us were communicating now his power allowed me to be walking with him so here's something that i want you to know about the spirit world he and i you do you do you know where we were walking i have it written in the book if you read the book then you'll see and whatever i'm going to say you'd have heard it because you read it we were not walking on the ground when jesus and i were walking we were not walking on the roads as you know it we weren't we were walking in mid-air it's like in the realm of the spirit there are these roads and streets streets and surfaces that exist that you cannot see with your natural eyes but they're there we were walking in mid-air so we were walking above everything that exists in this life as you know it okay and we were on the same level he was next to me he was to my left i was to his right and it's like he was escorting me i don't know how to put it i love you so much lord so while we were there walking he was you know he was talking with me i did detail the conversation um i have it there written in my book i don't know which page somebody can tell me which page it's on um he asked me he <laughs> let me tell you when you talk about humor he's so humorous he's so gentle he's just so i don't know i often say to people like <laughs> this might sound weird but I would rather have an encounter with Jesus. Wait, mm -mm, fix that. Fix that shit in. Let me fix it. Let me tell you what I want to say. I would rather be rebuked by Jesus than be rebuked by the Father. They're one and the same. But they have different expressions of who they are. Personality-wise, like... This, what I'm about to say, will only be grasped and understood by people who are at a certain level. Otherwise, you'll come, you'll hear me say something, and you'll be like, what? What did she, it's too much. Anyway, but when he came the second time, I guess, being aware of the fact that it's not easy to contain his presence he allowed himself to manifest in a more containable way yet it was i got so much more out of him because the first time he came he didn't he didn't talk to me he smiled but he didn't say anything to me he was just looking right in my future and i was looking back at him but now he was engaging me in a conversation right and um one of the questions that he asked me was do you know this this is exactly what he asked me he asked do you know how many times i've appeared to you so watch me now 
<laughs> so me know me ready for say one time. But before I could respond and say one time, he allowed out of nowhere this huge screen to appear in front of me, but, but more to the right of where we were. And on this screen, instead of him allowing me to tell him that I remember you appeared to me when I was younger, you know what he did? Instead, he allowed me to tell him. He showed me it on the screen. He allowed the whole scenario to just pop up in real time on the screen. It just play out the whole thing with me looking at him and he looking back at me. The whole scene. He put it on what looked like a billboard. Now, what was the question I said he asked me? Somebody type it in the comments because me like for no one to not pay attention. What a question. Tell me exactly what me say he asked me. When you tell me, me go tell you what happened next. You see, if you can't tell me, that means say you're not following, you're not listening. So, you know, make no sense, me continue. <laughs> I'm sorry to have all that light ray in the background. I didn't realize, sorry. All that glare. What was the question? Sister Daniel, how could you say you did not hear? I literally just told you what he asked me, so you were not paying attention, Sister Daniel. <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus. Hold on. <laughs> God. Oh, God. Mm. Hold on there. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Sister Danielle. <laughs> oh, God. How many times? How many times have, he, have I appeared? <laughs> Sister Danielle, you never know a while ago. I look, you look on the screen. I smutty type it and I read it to me because you weren't. I thought it was from before because I had to call. I had to come off quick and call mommy, share the thing. I said, mm. mommy, come on, I'm passing his Come, 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 come. Oh, you get wet. So I didn't know it was this. Oh, question. she get wet. I read him already for two, for take around. <laughs> I mean, like I tell you something very important, I'm going to feel like you're not paying attention. Right. So. You know, you teach her, you know I'm here. You know. <laughs> Okay, good. So I see all these students, they have the correct thing on the screen. I'm going to feel good. So they're going to listen. All right, later. All right, my beautiful. Yes. Yes. So he asked me, how many times have I appeared to you? That's the question he asked. So I was about to realize why he asked me that question. Because as far as I was concerned, how many times I said he appeared to me? One, one time. So, you see, after he showed me the whole scene on that billboard, eh, eh, when me look, I saw, excuse me, I pay gas. <laughs> gas. I be a gas in my stomach right now. Gas. <laughs> oh God, Shadin. <clears throat> you need to take a break. I eat. <coughs> I eat. <laughs> Hold on there. Where's the little juice somebody have? If me can't find the juice, then me can't finish the story. <laughs> You're lucky I'm going to find the juice. <laughs> you juice yeah. mm. All right. Okay. So, where was I? So, when me look, me can't talk like that. I have to say, when I looked, she's, um, so, when I looked on the screen, as I continued to look, right? 
I thought it was over because he just showed all that happened when I was eight. You see, when I thought it was over, behold, I saw another scene appear on the billboard. I was taken aback. When I saw the other scene, let me tell you what I saw. I saw his face this time being cushioned by two pillars of cloud. And in the center of his face, of course, was this radiance that looked a little bronzish. And the clouds that cushioned his face, those clouds, they did look not to loosen or they were glorious too. And I looked on that screen and I was like, but I don't remember. I wasn't talking to him, you know. I'm a self may I talk to. I'm sorry, I wasn't speaking to him, I was speaking to myself. I said, but I don't remember that appearance at all. Otherwise, of course, I would have mentioned it. You know what? I wasn't talking to him, you know. As I said, I was talking to myself. But I didn't realize he was hearing my thought. You know what he did? Immediately when I said, but I don't remember that. Immediately, he supernaturally caused memory to come to me. And I was able to remember the experience. Don't ask me how he did it. It's all just supernatural. Just supernatural and almost inexplicable. He allowed me to, in the moment, remember. Like I started to say, oh yes, I had no remembrance whatsoever that such an appearance had occurred. But when I said, I don't remember this, immediately he allowed memory to come to me. For those of you who are struggling with memory loss, I want you to know this. Jesus is so powerful, he brings back memory too. There's nothing that he cannot do, okay? I just want you to know that. Just know that. What else do you want me to say? Hello? Hello? Oh, by the way, so of course, God knows every language on earth. He is the one who innovates languages. He is the creator of languages. Chinese, he knows. Arabic, he knows. French, he knows. Spanish, he knows every language. Okay? So, of course, jargons and dialects, he knows as well. So, Jamaican Patois, he knows. Okay, but I'll tell you this, as a Jamaican, I want to speak from a Jamaican standpoint for a moment. You know, let me tell you something. I, I guess the Lord deals with us. He deals with us um, based on who we are, I guess. But the reason I say this is because... When the Lord was speaking to me, he did not speak to me Patwa. He spoke standard English. In other words, I want to say to you that the Lord knows every word in the dictionary. He's very intelligent. Like he knows perfect standard English. I want to give you an example of how impeccable his diction is, right? So... I thought I knew the English language and had a good command of it. I'm still struggling, apparently. At the time, I was going to learn something new. And it's sad to say I should have known this, but it's the Lord Jesus that helped me to learn this. Okay? So before I got to that point in this visitation where, you know, we were walking beside each other and the screen appeared. All of this is in my book. I've seen Jesus, you know. So you see, if you don't have your copy, you're sleeping. If you don't have your copy, you're missing out. 
you're really missing out. You need to grab your copy. I have already indicated in the comments that they're available on Amazon.ca, Amazon.us, Amazon.uk. Every time I read the book, I had to put it down, take a break and read it again because the presence of the Lord is overpowering me. Very good, Caressa. That's what someone typed in the comments. Okay. You need to also gift this book to someone. Okay. You need to buy it for someone. If you already have your copy, you need to buy it for someone. Let me tell you something. I promise you this. As my husband would say to me, he said, Shadeen, your book has not been sold yet. Your book not start selling yet. Same way. Your book has not started to make sales yet. Mm -mm. The world shall know this book. Do you hear me? You think I start talking about it yet? Me not start talk. Okay? Anyway. So, somebody typed the name of the book for me, for Vivian. I've seen Jesus, details of a divine call to intimacy and the supernatural. Anyway, so may I tell you about his, his English, his ability to speak and speak well, right? So... Before the walking beside him occurred and the screen and everything, um, I detail in the book how the experience started off, right? Um, so I told you in my book that it really started off before I was caught up in the spirit. He started me off with a dream first and I was in this very peculiar place that had a lot of greenery and it looked like there were two sets of choirs there. They were rehearsing for something. And while everyone was, you know, getting themselves ready for whatever the occasion was and all the choir members were dressed in robes, I noticed that there was this man who was in the midst of everybody and he was, he stood out. In fact, everybody was wearing, I think, purple robes, but this man was wearing white and everybody was minding their own business. Some were chatting to the person next to them, but I was the only one who noticed the presence of a man in their midst. And this man, well, he just stood out, yet nobody saw him. Now, as I drew closer, I realized it was Jesus in the midst. So when he, Jesus, saw that I saw him, he, he ascended like supernaturally. He was lifted up off the ground. He was fixed in the midair for a moment. And then it's like he was in a position that was, he, he opened his arms like this so that with the robe that he was wearing and his arms being extended, he made the shape of the cross. I guess that was a deliberate move of him <clears throat> to open his arms so that he, his whole body would shape like the cross. So anyway, um, I think in the book, I'll just, I'm speaking from memory. It's in the book, though. I think I said, like I said, wait, 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 wait. The people on the ground, like I soon started to hear their thoughts. And they were like, who is this man? And some were wondering, is this Jesus? And as the people started to ask the question and the questions became louder and louder, in their heads, the Lord Jesus answered and he said, just he's, and by the way, I always tell you that he's a man of few words. He does not speak a lot. I can tell you about Jesus. He doesn't speak a lot. Okay. He's one of those people 
well, he's God, but I want you to know his personality is of such that he will make it short and to the point, yet it'll be so effective. He does not use many words. He doesn't say a lot. He doesn't talk much. You see how some people talk, talk, talk? He's not that person. He doesn't talk a lot. I want you to know that about Jesus. He's not a talker. Okay? He says what he has to say, and when he's done, that's it. And whatever he says in that short space of time, whether he gives you one sentence or two sentences, it will keep you for a lifetime. It will be so effective, so profound, so powerful that you would see why he didn't need to say many words. He's not verbose. <clears throat> Amen. So when the people started to ask, who is this? Is this Jesus? The speculations intensified. I only heard him open his mouth. Did he open his mouth? But I, I know his answer came and everybody was able to hear him. He said, it is I. Many of you know said that was proper English. Come me think say, you have to say, it is me. Yes, when I study English, he's correct. It's not, it is me. It's, it is I. Yes, when I go in a scripture, he has answered some people similarly. It is I. He speaks the same way. Nothing about him has changed. It's the same Jesus. His personality is the same. Everything about him remains the same. He has not changed the same way he was. In the days of Peter, James, and John, that's how he is today. Nothing about him has changed. Nothing. Okay, let me lean back and read some of these comments. <clears throat> Hi, Lizand, who's watching from Guyana. Okay. Excuse me. Do you have any questions? Hmm. I love to talk about Jesus. I really do. Oh, Father. He said, it is I. It is I. It is I. He didn't say it is me. He said, it is I, which is the correct sentence. He said, it is I. I didn't even know it was correct at the time. <laughs> Dunce me. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> he said, it is I. And it was him. So. He's just wonderful. He's just wonderful. He's just wonderful. He's so wonderful. He's so loving. He's so kind. He's so great. So wonderful. Hallelujah. Yes, Sister Danielle, I'll do that because guess I kill me. Ah. <clears throat> he is indeed Lord. How does he wear these many hats but remain so humble? He's so gentle in his heart. He's just so welcoming, so loving, so patient. I talk about, I think I talked about this experience. The thing is, I don't want to talk about anything that I did not talk about in the book because if I didn't mention it in the book, is a reason why the Lord did not allow me to mention it. So I'm trying to remember if I talked about this experience. Um, I don't know if I mentioned 
wait let me see let me see one second okay i don't think i did i talk about it i think i did it might be under the section titled yeah i think i did it's it's it might be under the section chapter six titled more encounters with jesus um one second here it is it's in there so i can talk about it it's actually on page 93 of your book you know sometimes um reading the thing is one thing but when you hear it from the mouth of the witness it's another thing so I'll never forget how in the year 2016, I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, why? Because something very special happened. In 2016, 2016, but at the same year. Watch out. So I got numerous visitations in the month of April and then in the month of let me see if I have it written here. I believe it was July of the said year. Jamaica usually has an annual show called Fun in the Sun. If you're a Jamaican, let me know if you've ever heard of it. You must. It named Fun in the Sun. At that concert, they usually would have like major acts, major performances, major performers. I remember it like yesterday. I remember that in that year. Let me tell you how much remember the, remember. The Lord has allowed me to remember. You see, every time I have a visitation, I'll tell you everything that happened. On the day when I had another visitation, this was a day when I was going to have a visitation. Sun, fun in the, if you look it up on Google, Fun in the Sun 2016, whatever the date is, I believe it's July, I had a visitation from Jesus. At Fun in the Sun, I'll never forget. I think for me, personally speaking, the performance that stood out for me it was it was just so magnificent by the way so many great artists came out but i'm not going to lie so minister marion hall was actually one of the performers and i'll never forget because see when you go to different places different things will stand out for you and so you and i might go to the same concert and you'll remember something that i don't remember because it didn't stand out for me but i'll never forget uh, it was during that fun and the fun in the sun concert when she introduced us to this song. I want you to know how much I remember that day and every detail of the day because the Lord visited me that day. It's a special day in my head. She sang, she sang this song where she was telling us that, um, like she'd say, if God sends her her husband, right? Like she, the song say, um, he must be anointed and filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, the, the crowd got very excited. Just listening to the lyrics, okay? It was just an amazing fun in the sun. I'm not going to lie. I never heard about that song. But that song there, they really just rock up the place. The lyrics, everything. I'll never forget that. That fun in the sun there was a fun in the sun to remember. Because, as I said, on that day, I had a visitation. So what? You see when media fun in, fun in the sun? In a crowd too, you know, tick, tick crowd. Meet up, meet up on cloud nine. Okay? Me just did I have extra fun because for me, because the Lord Jesus had visited me not too long before I got to the location, me the under one different kind of glory in a fun in the sun. So everything did just seem sweeter 
when clo when when people think they were having fun, me did I have way more fun. You see, when worship are gone, me did they higher and deeper in a worship. I'm not going to lie. It's like everything was just way up for me on that day. So if you ask me who were there, me can tell you who did it because I was there and it was amazing. I think during that time too, bring it back to my memory, I believe Denise Hunt had visited, they had called her on stage at some point or something like that. But I, I keep hearing, it must be anointed. I filled with the Holy Ghost or something like that. But let me tell you. That visitation. Let me talk about that. Was. What is this? That visitation. Was really amazing. Oh hi. Look at Shamelia. Shamelia says. Wow. Her performance stood out to me too. 2016 was also a life changing year for me. Her ministry and testimony was a blessing for me. Yes. To me. She was the best performer. At Fun in the Sun. 2016. She. God has graced her with that. She. I, I, she then she came with all these songs. And. For me, it was my first time like hearing her perform as a Christian because remember, it had not been long after she had converted. So this was just such a blessing. We were, I was in the congregate and I was just listening to her lyrics. I just think she is so talented. When you hear about lyricists, you can't take that away from her. God has anointed her. And I listened to her songs. They were very touching very inspiring. I loved her performance. And for me, it stands out in my head today, to this day, as the best performance for me during that experience. Okay. So, yeah. Muan teasing about Muan tell you about the appearance. I want to tell you what happened, but it's right in the book, so I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> That's why you see me a drag it out. So. <laughs> <laughs> if me tell you everything, you're not gonna read the book. <laughs> you know somebody I talk a story and you wait for them get to the point and oh no them can't get to the point. Yes, that's me just now. <laughs> me just a drug, drug, drug. <laughs> ah, mm, oh god, me not have no reason for a drug out this so long. I just me choose to because me I say, Lord, should I tell them? Me not tell them. And I'm going to read the book. <laughs> mm. Okay, family. <laughs> all right. So, all right. Me done talk now. But that experience at Fun in the Sun is mentioned on page... Wait there. Sister Danielle met me can't find it. Sit here. Page 93. Page 93. It was awesome. Why was it so awesome? Because I did not know that in the realm of the spirit, I could be on a conference call with Jesus. That's it. Three of us were on the line. Jesus, myself, and a man who asked me, asked me who he is, asked me his name, asked me where he's from. I don't. No, but the three of us were on the line. I love you. I love you. I ain't telling you anymore. I will not tell you anything more. Go read the book. <laughs> go read the book. If you want to know more, go read. <laughs> Shayla Gray said, I'm here waiting for the sweet part of the story. That the sweet part did not come for no God, trust me. Shadina dried out. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. <laughs> so it's whole long moment up on here. I've been on here for a while. You know. <laughs> um <laughs> 
I am here. And um, you do know that since I released, I've seen Jesus, right? Excuse me. I've also released two other books. Bible quiz time for those people who want to test their Bible knowledge. And also... Um, my dream diary for people who dream a lot, who want to write down their books. So these other books are also on Amazon. So I want to say that I am in the process of writing my second book, but how can I say it's my second book when really and truly it's going to be my fourth book? So I really don't know what to say. I am writing again, but this time I'm giving you details into my life. Um, what I've experienced, not what I've experienced last year, because you see what my experience last year coming over into this year and even now, that's a whole different ball game. That I have going to want different book where the Lord has literally allowed me to go through stuff stuff that some of you had become aware of on social media. I have had to go through some stuff so I can tell you about witchcraft and I can tell you about some diabolical things, but the Lord has to tell me when to reveal those things. It's just not yet time, but everything that I go through, I go through for a reason. So, Outside of these events that happened in recent times, between my time of being converted and I want to say 2020, which was an accentuated time in my life and ministry, a lot of things happened that I want to share with you, okay? These are things that I would say have formed the foundation, my roots, my spiritual roots. What caused me to pray the way I do? What did I encounter? How was I trained? Who were the people I was trained among? What were some of the struggles what was it like being someone who was taken from outside the church, being placed within the context of the church, dealing with church folks, some of the realities in the church setting, all of those things, the manipulation, there's just so much. So I'm writing again. Please pray that the Lord gives me the grace to be disciplined. This book, of course, that I'm writing now is going to be longer than this. There's so much to share with you to help you. If you are a minister hopeful or you were called to ministry, you're going to need my book. You're going to learn some of your do's and don'ts, some things that you should do and some things you will never do. You just don't do them. There are rules of engagement. And I'm here to tell you that when it comes to ministry, there are some do's and don'ts. And I'm here to tell you that the church is one of the most unsafe places to be at times. Why this phone battery are low? Let me see if I insert another. There's just so much to say. Um, so let's just be prayerful where that is concerned, family. There's just so much to talk about. I'm going to talk about a lot of things. Uh, encounters that I've had with different kinds of spirits. I want to talk about the first time that I got introduced to the Judah spirit. I want to talk about the first time I encountered the Jezebel spirit. There's just so much. It's just going to be amazing. That's all I'm going to say. All right, Rochelle from the Philippines, I love you as well. Thank you for joining. 
family, I have to go. Because if me not go, go put something on my stomach right now. Yes, I go fool me up. Okay? And I can't afford for gas fill me up. In fact, let me see the time. There's a person I had promised to call. I should be taking somebody through deliverance. Let me see here. Oh, dear. Mm. Oh, dear. Mm. Mm. Oh, dear. I was supposed to pray with this person. But it looks like the unclean spirit in this person has influenced her to go to a place where we don't know where she is. Well, I'm reading the message now. So I cannot call the person to pray for her because she's no longer at the person's. She has been led away to somewhere. Police is involved. I'm going to have to pray for this person. Anyway. Um, there was another person I had told to call me after the broadcast. They were listening to the message that I did titled, Build Back Your Relationship. And I guess they have some questions. So I'm going to hear from that person what they have to say and answer any questions they have. And of course, provide guidance. Um, so... I'm going to help someone just now. I love you. Have a wonderful rest of the evening. Bye-bye. Uh, Sister Gloria, I just saw your message. She says, why do you say the church? Well, it is sometimes one of the most unsafe spaces to be in so you're asking me why i say that and if i can explain when i'm at my house i don't have to deal with witches and wizards and sorcerers but sometimes when you go into churches you have to deal with them do you not see it can be very unsafe it can be very dangerous when i'm at my house for instance I don't have a problem worshiping Lord. the Lord. It's so easy to go into his presence. Sometimes you can go into a church. You can't even make connection with his presence. Because when you think you're dealing with people who are authentic and people who are truly serving the Lord, they're not serving the Lord. They're serving the devil. So how can a space like that be safe for your spirituality? And your development, it cannot be. So we're talking about environments that unfortunately are called churches, but are not really the true church of God. Like the sanctuaries are not really God's sanctuary. It's man that calls it, oh, this is my church. Of course, it's your church because the Holy Spirit does not belong there. You have shut him out. You've never invited him there. You know, stuff like that. So... In one go, there's just so much to uncover in answering that question. But I hope you get a gist of it, that that space can sometimes be very unsafe. And it's just the truth. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Bye, family.